check, check, check. And there's the webcam. Okay, so what I'm doing right now should probably fall under the category of an OpenTunes quick tip, I would expect. So I'm going to show you why. Uh, it appears in many cases that I use keyframes that are you might say too coarse there's too big of a change between them so as you can see here 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 that's a big jump you know it feels more like an animatic than an animation per se well here's the reason why on this shot for example I really wanted her to be kinda going like this cuz she's ranting and raving at the the guys that just got knocked senseless by her friend Zen. Well, I knew that what I'm about to show, I knew I was going to do this. And so, this is kind of a good example of where you, I'm going to get some real additional production value out of just a very small number of, of actual drawings. What I did was I hit the X key, okay, and when you hit the X key, that invokes the plastic tool and the first thing you do when you use the plastic tool is you create a mesh so what it's doing is it's creating essentially almost like a polygonal mesh if you if you use blender or you've done any 3d modeling you know what a mesh is it's basically a bunch of what you see here a bunch of vertices that are connected it's basically a bunch of triangles and you can set the density of those triangles as coarse or as fine as you want now in my case I already created that mesh okay so here it is and then what I did was then um, and when when you do that open tunes creates a new level creates an adjacent column and uh, now this plastic tool uh, instance is controlling this adjacent level okay so then after you um, generate the mesh. The second step is to build the skeleton. So what I did was I, I built the skeleton this way. Um, I, I don't I, I kinda like the way the skeleton's working so I don't want to go in and change too much with it or anything like that but basically the way OpenTunes deals with interpolating um, movement and what part of the skeleton is deforming what part of the the drawing it's it's not the most amazing algorithm in the world but it's pretty good if you want to have control over it the key is to put in extra bones for parts of the drawing that you want to have under control so that's what these two bones down here are these two right here I put those there specifically because I knew I was going to be rotating this bone here which is going to turn her on her basically around her belly button and I didn't want the hips to, to, I didn't want the bottom edge of her hips to go like this and lift up out of the frame, which the first time I did it, that's actually exactly what happened. So what you find with OpenTunes is when you're building skeletons, you learn how to create a concise skeleton and then add a couple extra bones to keep certain areas of the mesh under control, you might say. Okay, another significant, so actually, I'll tell you what, I was going to say, another significant thing about that is that um, you, if you look at the schematic, what, what actually got done when I created the plastic tool instance was it created this mesh column, which is the one I just showed, and then it took the level that I was applying the mesh to, and it actually goes ahead and... Um, feeds it into the plastic tool. So the plastic tool is effectively controlling this um, this drawing. So now I can go into animate mode and you can see what happens. I can actually bend this and as you can see if I didn't have these extra bones here for her hips um, it would be a little bit out of control you can actually see it sneaking up right there okay and I can do you know there's other stuff I can do like a little bit of this action if I wanted to give her a little bit of attitude 
a little bit of a turn of the head. And if I want to see, see how the head stretches, well, that would be easy to fix, actually. In fact, that I will do. That I will demonstrate. I'll go into Build Skeleton. I'll show you. If I go grab this bone right here and then put a couple extra bones. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do it from here. I'm going to grab this one, and then I'm going to put a couple extra bones here and here. And what will that what that will do is it'll force that part of the mesh to follow along more tightly. So now you can see her jaw is still stretching. So there's, you know, if I really want to start getting crazy with it, um, you need to put in a fair number of ancillary bones to assert the appropriate control over your mesh. However, if you don't move them too far, like that, for example, you see? So I'm getting all of this animation activity out of this one just by putting the plastic tool on one single drawing. Now another thing that's important, you can see the shadow isn't, it, the shadow's in a different level and so it's not really following her. That's okay, that's actually easy to fix. You just go down and grab the shadow layer and feed it into the plastic tool as well. That's it. Now the shadow follows along perfectly and as you can see because the um, subsequent drawing see there's like this drawing here that has a different expression on our face so so you can see here that it actually switches between three different drawings as long as the drawings um, in in this case because they are very similar by the way I I, sh I just pointed to the wrong column that's the shadow column I meant this column here okay but you can have um, frame by frame animation going on within the you know the sequence that's being manipulated by the plastic tool no problem as long as they're similar in shape and size which in this case they are okay um, so another thing about the plastic tool that's kinda nice is that if I want to here I can go I can go I can go right here and actually, I think if I if I create a mesh here, let's just test this. And then what I'm going to do is choose a different path. So it's going to complete a, a second mesh. It's going to create a second mesh. And then up here in the plastic tool, I also can create another skeleton. So I'm going to go ahead and click that so it creates a second skeleton. And this skeleton is going to... I'm going to go into build skeleton mode. And this one I'll make like stupidly simple. Just so that we can really just do some basic stuff. Okay. And then I go into animate mode. And here again, you know, see, we need, we don't have those extra bones around the hip. So obviously your hip is acting funny. See. And the reason it's it's not staying under control is because this bone is not actually over the mesh. So we could try to fix it this way. Go into the build skeleton mode and just move this up to here so that now it's exerting some influence on the mesh. Okay. Now we'll go back in here and so you can uh well, okay, sort of sort of but not really. Okay. But uh, but the point is to, to be able to put in some secondary animation, right, like this, is kind of almost dead easy. I mean, it's really, really easy to, to get more mileage out of a small number of drawings. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe OpenTunes will intelligently switch between both meshes and skeletons within one level. So it's not like you have to have 50,000 plastic tool levels in order to be able to address the secondary animation needs of this entire column, which obviously has zillions and zillions and zillions of different drawings in it, right? So now I've just I've just basically fixed this little sequence up, and it took. I mean, no matter how good I may be at drawing, you know, today, there's no way I would have gotten as good of a result by just drawing that over and over and over. There's no way I'm not that good. And then, okay, so. Usually when I'm working with the plastic tool, I'll take the, the level that corresponds to the plastic tool and just just turn it off. So I don't when I'm not working with the plastic tool, I just don't see it. 
So now this is what we have. And I mean, this is such a massive improvement. <laughs> it makes me laugh because it's such a massive improvement compared to what I had just a couple minutes ago. And it totally smoothed out that problem of transitions that are too abrupt. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to show that because it is really economical and uh, pretty easy pretty predictable as long as you build your your skeleton correctly and I'm just gonna leave this here because I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of places in this scene where I'm gonna want that just a little bit of secondary animation um, to just add a little bit more production value so okay so I think um, rather than uh, continue in this video. I think I'll stop this so I can call it an Open Tunes quick tip and uh, then it's back to work.